Peace. Hello, everyone. I am Kenny Baraka, and I'll be your host for the official World Book Day Book Club. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by our first ever World Book Day Book Club author, Shauna Jackson. Shauna is the author of High Rise Mystery, our first WBD book club title, as well as her second fantastic middle grade mystery, Mike Drop. Shauna, how are you doing today? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Kenny. I am Shauna, as you say, and I am so pleased to be here. I am the writer of High Rise Mysteries, like you said, which came out in 2019. And then Mic Drop, bang, I love that, came out in 2020. I'm having a really good day because I love World Book Day. So being part of the book club and the first person to be on the book club is amazing. So I'm very, very well, thank you. I guess we'll start at the beginning, starting with the all and most important question, what snack would you choose to eat with this particular book? Oh, well, I am very greedy. So I am very into snacks of all kinds. So I would probably go with, with, with two peas, two of my favorite peas, one being prawn cocktail crisps, which are the most elite flavor of crisps that you can get. But also in the book, I talk about pierogies. And pierogies are, um, a little Polish dumpling uh, that can be filled with vegetable or meat and then you just like pan fry them a little Mwah! and they are so good so I would definitely be eating pierogies with High Rise Mystery. Shana, what can you tell us about High Rise Mysteries? What can you leak to us about High Rise Mystery? High Rise Mysteries is about two young sisters called Nick and Norva who live on an estate called the Tri in South East London. And they are basically busybodies. They are always looking out their window, peeking behind doors, wondering what everybody is up to. And one day they follow their notes and their noses to the bins where they dun, 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 find the body of their art teacher, Hugo Knightley Webb, in there and he's dead. And they quickly have to solve the murder because it looks like somebody quite close to home is in the frame. So the heat is on. Hmm. Page turner. Um, Shauna, how did you come to write HRM? And I guess what inspired you? So I've been really inspired by other murder mystery stories. And I was very, very lucky that on High Rise Mysteries, the editor, the person who helped me to make the book better was Robin Stevens. And now everybody knows who Robin Stevens is. And she's like, well, if you don't, she's the author of the Murder Most Unladylike series. Um, so I was really inspired by her. But for me, I grew up watching and reading lots of Sherlock Holmes and Pryro. And I love the stories because to me, they're a bit like games and you have to like figure it out, figure out the story. And I love that. And what was interesting about all of those stories is that they are set in the past and they're, they usually focus quite rich people who live in fancy estates. And I thought, ooh, let's change that. Let's make the people more ordinary and have a council estate rather than a country estate. Can you tell us a bit about Nick and Norva, who are the main characters of the book? Uh, how did they go about solving a mystery and how did you go about writing it? So Nick and Norva are two sisters. Nick is 11 and Norva is 13 and they're very different, but they're complementary, which is what I think you should have when you're doing, uh, when you're having a, uh, when you're writing a murder mystery and you have your two detectives, they shouldn't be too similar or too different because it'd be too weird, but so they complement each other. And yeah, Nick is 11 and she is, um, she describes herself as science led with a shaved head. And I'm a bit like that because I keep cutting my hair off and then letting it grow and then cutting it off. And Norva is 13 and she's got long braids and a short temper and she's much more dramatic. And I really liked writing about sisters because I don't have a sister. I've got two younger brothers. So it's a kind of like wish fulfillment thing for me a bit. But when it comes to writing a murder mystery, um, like Nick and Norva, actually, you have to be quite detail oriented. So you need to know what's happening in your story at all times. And like one of the best things about working with the lovely Robin Stevens was getting some tips from her. When we first met, she showed me a spreadsheet of all her characters in her book, in one particular book she was writing. And um, times were listed in every column 
and then characters were listed on the side in rows. So she knew where everybody was at all times. And that's something that I've learned to do. You have to make sure you know where everybody is. And you know, you have to put in your red herrings to trick people and distract them from the truth. Um, but yes, the most important thing is making sure you know what happens and when and where everybody else is. I like that. I like the idea of detail being detail oriented. And also, if you don't know where everybody is at a time, then how can the reader? I, I, I love that. Um, what themes did you want to draw out in the book? And I guess why? So I wanted to make sure that the two sisters were black and the black girls in the stories were really funny and clever and smart, because for me, it's really important that black girls and all kids get to see themselves in the books that they read. So that was something that was underpinning part of the writing for it. Also because it's set on a council estate and sometimes council estates have negative um, comments aimed towards them. I wanted to show the people on estates being very collaborative and caring and a really nice strong community. So that was in there too strong female protagonists and strong sense of community kind of fighting a lot of the the stereotypes about both i guess um Absolutely. so then how how did you choose to write from nick's perspective and was it or did you ever at any point find that to be a challenge so nick and norbert are very different and you can tell who's speaking and and who's doing things and I think that's what you have to do as a writer. But Nick's perspective was more challenging, yes, because she's quite brief and concise and to the point and, and very scientific, while Norva can go off on a tangent and she's much more expressive. So yeah, it was it was different in both of them. I love them both, like they're both my babies and I could never choose between them, but it's, yeah, it's very different. You love each character differently. Which do you love yes. the best? I love them differently. Can't it be both? Um, what would you say are your favorite kinds of scenes to write? So I really loved writing about the estate itself. And if you ask Knights of, who are the publishers of High Rise Mysteries, they can tell you that I spent a lot of time thinking and reading about estates and how they were built and when they were built and why and how people move around them. So I've spent a lot of time writing about and researching lifts and how lifts judder or work and what happens when the light is broken and how things called risers work in flats. So yeah, I was very obsessed um, with the setting itself and I really enjoyed thinking and reading and, and writing about that. I'm sure if asked, a lot of readers would answer, High Rise Mysteries, of course, followed by Mic Drop because of the attention to detail and the, the, you know, just the really good writing and the character development. But now I'm asking you, what is your favorite book and why? Okay, so my favorite book, my favorite book when I was growing up was a book called The Runaways by Ruth Thomas. And it was written, I think, in 1988 or around that time, because I read it when I was quite young, it was around seven or so. And it's about two two kids who go to a school in East London and they're not friends at all and they're classmates but they're not friends and one day they happen to be walking home from school together and they go into an abandoned house and they find ten thousand pounds which is an incredible amount of money now imagine how much it was back in 1988 and what they do with this money is they try to make friends with people in their class by buying them little gifts like oh here's a mars bar here's a bag of crisps here are some felt tip pens but the teachers start getting suspicious about you know the, the origins of this money so worried that they're going to get arrested by the police they decide to run away and they run away to places like uh, Brighton, Bristol, uh, Taunton in some set and they go everywhere and it's so good. What's so good about it for me is the relationship between the two characters it's a young white girl and a young black boy and they're very different but slowly throughout the progress in the course of the story they not necessarily become best friends but they definitely respect each other's opinion and they work together really nicely as a duo and I just love that book so much and also I think it really had like um, an influence on the way I grew up actually 
because they went to Brighton and I ended up moving to Brighton for like six years. Uh, the boy is obsessed with boats and I ended up living on a boat. So it's like one of those things that I've read that actually, when I look back on it, because I reread it recently, I think it has a lot to answer for. So um, yeah, the more you read, yeah. I mean, reading is just wonderful and it can really lead you into some incredible places. So we have this thing here at World Book Day Book Club called the Book Club Question. And by I mean we have this thing, I mean you'll be the first to ever ask and pose a question. If you could pose and ask a book club question to your readers right now, what would it be? Okay, I've got two questions because I'm greedy. So my first question is, high is mystery related. When uh, did you figure out who the culprit was? When did you know who did it? Because I really want to know when you guessed it. And my second question is, what is your favorite first line of a book that you've read? I'd really like to know that because first lines are really hard and I spend a lot of time thinking about them. Thank you so much for joining us for our first ever World Book Day Book Club. Hope you've had a fantastic time thinking, hearing, and talking about books. And let us know, because we know you will, let us know how much you love and what you thought of High Rise Mystery. Sean, it's been fantastic having you. Oh, it's been so fantastic to be here. And I tell you this, I am so appreciative and pleased to be the first book club in the World Book Day series. And meeting you has been awesome. So thank you so much for having me. And I hope everybody watching really enjoys High Rise Mystery. And please be forthcoming with any thoughts and comments. Mm -hmm.